Hi, I'm Nate Seberg, and this is One Day Ahead. Welcome to One Day Ahead, Great Gatsby. This is a web series for teachers and students keeping a day ahead of the class. And this video is a big picture overview of my unit. It's how I frame the text for student exploration and a justification for the choices I make. The Great Gatsby unit is available below, but if you're not here for that, if you just want recaps of chapters and some general ideas, that's the other eight videos. Skip this one, no hard feelings. So you're teaching the Great Gatsby. Here's your problem. This is a series of events narrated by a guy named Nick, written by a guy named Fitzgerald. It captured the spirit of the 1920s and is often seen as prophetic in hindsight because it symbolically predicts the crash and Great Depression, which they didn't know was coming at the time of publication. So what do you do? The thing is, you really need to pick a lens and stay with it. And I suggest the level of character. These people are real and their choices revealing. I'm not like absolutist about it. I don't pretend like Fitzgerald doesn't exist. But in general, I discuss the story as if it's written by a guy named Nick. When we quote the text, we are quoting Nick. When we look at Daisy, her choices are revealing about her past, not about Fitzgerald's view of women or the evolving role of housewives in urban 1920 high society or blah, 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 blah. You could see how this gets out of hand in a hurry. So pick a lens and stay with it. Choosing a lens means you're gonna have to let some things go. So yeah, Fitzgerald's life was wild and interesting and sad. And yes, the 1920s saw an explosion of wealth and social change and flappers. And whenever you Google it, always this picture, but really don't go there to start. Let that go. It's tempting to think that students need all this context and background, but really that stuff is tangential at best to what is exceptional here. A good story, incredible prose, outstanding characters. Aim at that. Start reading day one, and when you do, talk about Nick, not Fitz. Now, I want to get a little granular on the unit I'm selling. Most of it is self-explanatory, but there are three things that I should really touch on. Number one, lit circles. Lit circles are really the centerpiece of this unit. You're going to put students in groups of five. There are nine chapters in this book, but I combine eight and nine, so really it's just eight. Five of those eight, students will read the chapter and prepare one of five specific roles. So five kids in a group, each with a different role. You got the group leader, the summarizer, someone in charge of quotes, etc. They meet in class and hold an entirely student-led discussion of the chapter. I aim for like 25 minutes, which can take some coaching, especially if you want them to eventually move off the material they're prepared and into a more dynamic and honest discussion. For the next meeting, everyone in the group will rotate roles. You'll do this five times so everyone will play every role. Next, I want to talk about the did you read quizzes. Actually reading the book is the hill I choose to die on. Kids can get an approximation of about anything from some blowhard on the internet. And I maintain there is something worthwhile and irreplaceable about encountering the text directly. But you already know the problem. You don't want to waste your time chasing kids who are not reading. You didn't become a teacher to play gotcha or bad cop or data processor. So we end up settling for like 40% of the class reading and the rest faking their way through it. It sucks. But I got you covered. It's zero grading, takes under two minutes. So go with me on this. Kids will omit the truth, but most will not straight up lie to you. So on days where they're supposed to read, put stickies by the door. Students write their name and either I have read all of the chapter or I did not read all of the chapter. Most will be honest. They hand them in and I sort them on the spot. Only those who said they read get to take the quiz on a second sticky. Those who didn't and were honest, they just start reading. So included in the unit are chapter quizzes with three obscure yet obvious questions. They're the sort of thing you would know instantly if you read, but not if you went to YouTube or Cliff Notes. Here's the kicker. For full credit, students only need to get one right. They hand them in and I sort them right there. Full credit or nothing. So now you got three groups. Kids who read and got them all right. Full credit and I recycle those. Kids who are honest about not reading, those kids can come take an alternate quiz once they read. I do it verbally so it's quick and they get partial credit. And the kids who said they read but then missed all the questions, they have no recourse. So the power here isn't in playing gotcha. It's in helping students be honest with themselves and establishing a body of evidence you can use to facilitate honest conversations about their choices. Eventually, if they don't have an IEP or not ELL, they don't have special needs that should absolutely be supported, I'm eventually going to move those students who are straight up refusing to read into the same lit circle group. Because screw them. I mean, the kids preparing should not have to carry those who refuse to. 
One more thing, the character illumination chart is a place for students to hold their thinking as we encounter each character. It's really meant as a setup for the culminating piece of this unit. I've had each lit circle group take a different character. I've had each member of every group take one of the characters so that the group covers them all collectively. And I've had everyone track everyone. So do what makes sense for you and your kids. And that's all I got. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I hope these videos and ideas lead students to better appreciate fine literature, engage in insightful and original thinking, and come to a more complete understanding of themselves. My hope is that you'll take these ideas and own them. Keep the good, fix the broken, ignore the bad. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next book.